All right, guys, welcome back to the workshop. Today I'm going to be doing sort of a tutorial on how to service one of these little shaded pole C-frame motors. Now, these are very commonly found in smaller fans. So if you're a fan collector and if you have a smaller fan, it's pretty much a guarantee that you'll have one of these in there, if not a shaded pole two-pole motor. So in this video, I'm going to be servicing this particular little motor, which is from a microwave with this little blade on. And it's in pretty good shape. It runs fine, but you know, for me, every motor I get has to get serviced. So I'm gonna get started and I'll show you how I do it. So right off the bat, if the motor's dirty, you wanna get it completely cleaned. Um, this one had some dust and kitchen grease on it, not a surprise. So I vacuumed it off, cleaned it off, used a little brush, dusted all the windings, and now it's very clean. So we can get right into the servicing. All right, so now I'm going to be taking the bearing housings off, both front and the rear. Um, on some motors, they'll be riveted on. This one is luckily screwed on, backed with these nuts. So all I need is a screwdriver. Let me try to not strip these screws out. There we go. Now, just a disclaimer, this is just the way I service my motors. It's not necessarily the right or the wrong way, but this is the way I've been doing it for many years. Since I started collecting and this is the best way that I've found to service these motors. Okay so now these should come apart but take note that on some motors this shaft may be either rusty or have some gunk built up on it. If that's the case what you want to do is take some WD-40 spray it on there and try to wipe all of it off or if it's rusted take some steel wool buff it out because if you try to pull the bearing assembly off with all that stuff on there, it's going to completely destroy the bearing. So just be careful with that. But with this one, it's fairly clean. So there's the rotor, front bearing, and ideally this should just slide out. There's a little bit of resistance, so I'm actually going to take some WD-40 and wipe that off. Okay, that looks much cleaner, hopefully. Yes, that's what you want. If there's any resistance, don't force it. You wanna make sure it comes out as smooth as that. And I just noticed that this motor actually has oil ports, which is really cool. I did not expect that. Here's the rotor. I'm gonna have to clean that up a little bit. And on the rear, we have the, the rotor's rolling away. The rear housing. This one also has oil ports. It was installed upside down for some reason. But there it is. On to the next step. You want to make sure you wipe off all the old oil or some residue off of the motor shaft. Clean it off first and if there are spacers like this one you want to remove them. Sometimes I have to kind of turn them to get them out. But slide them off like that. The rear doesn't have any which is a little odd. I'm not sure how they stay in there. Oh, I see how it works. With this motor, the back of the shaft actually rides against the back wall of the bearing. So if you look at it, it doesn't need a spacer. So a different design, but some motors will have a spacer like this or some little ones, thin washers in there. So you want to make sure you don't lose them or if they're stuck on the bearing, take them off and clean them. So these ones, just wipe them off get all the old oil off. If they're really gunky, take some WD-40, spray it inside, wipe them off. Same with the rotor shaft. These ones are very clean, so I'm not gonna worry about cleaning them off like that. So slide it back on, give it another wipe. And we'll set that aside. Hopefully it doesn't roll away. All right. And with these bearing assemblies, what you want to do is take a fresh piece of paper towel. I like to use this because it's pretty soft, it doesn't hurt the bearing. And roll it up into a little tube like that. And basically just slide it in there. Like that. It should be a snug fit. If it's too loose, it's not going to clean it. You just want to 
spin it, and if possible, just pull it through the entire bearing. So that way it cleans all the old gunk out of there. Same with the rear. You can get a fresh piece to use, but this motor is very clean, so I'm not going to bother with that. Make sure it's all the way in. Twist it around. If it's really dirty, sometimes when you remove these, if you see a lot of black or brown grease or residue, dried up residue in there, take some WD-40, it'll really help. Okay, so let's get to the oiling. And also it's a good idea to check the inside of the stator where the rotor is to make sure there's no dust. You can see some light fluff in there. Clean it out. Sometimes there'll be some dust stuck in the little grooves there where the shaded pole is. That short winding. Boom. All right, let's get to the oiling. So when it comes to oiling fans, the number one question I get asked all the time is what oil should you use? So here are my two recommendations. Zoom Spout Turbine Oil or the three-in-one electric motor oil. This is the blue and white can. Make sure you're not using the black and white can because that is not formulated for electric motors. It's a household general purpose oil. Um, this is the one I use the most. It's the best oil that I've found so far. It's the Subco Zoom Spout Turbine Oil. It's also sold under many different brand names, but it's basically the same oil. And this one's really good. Um, I found that this one has better film strength than the three-in-one. Um, the 3-in-1 also has a bit of a citrus smell to it, which is quite strong. And it's a bit annoying when you're using the fan, you, all you smell is the oil. This one is pretty much odorless. Um, it's clear also. It's a great oil. So this is the one I recommend the most, but if you have this or if you see this, this is just as good. So what you want to do now is oil the porous bronze bushing in there and also around the bushing and in here within this housing there will be almost like a donut shaped felt that will soak up the oil and will dispense it to the bearing as the fan runs and it, as it heats up so you want to make sure you oil the felt if you don't it's not going to last a very long time before it needs to be oiled again and same with the rotor just apply a little bit of oil along the shaft before you assemble it and just for convenience I have some of the zoom spout transferred over to a little needle bottle for convenience reach into tighter spaces so what you want to do is take some oil put it around the bearing put it inside the bearing too let it kind of get to all sides and then you want to make sure that you put some around it to let the felt wick soak up that oil and that's going to provide lubrication long term so you can see some oil inside the bushing and that bushing is actually going to soak up some of that oil and you want to let this sit for i don't know it depends on how big the motor is a motor this small with really small bearings you can pretty much assemble it right away, but for me, with bigger motors such as oscillating or box fan motors, I usually leave it for about an hour or two, sometimes even overnight, just to let the oil soak in, and then I give it a second dose of oil before I put it back together. So we'll let this sit while we do the rear bearing. Same procedure here. Put it on the bushing, inside the bushing, around the felt. You want to be generous with the oil you put in the felt, but don't overdo it because it's going to end up just leaking and making a mess. And now with this motor, the because the rotor rides against the back of the housing, I'm going to drip some oil all the way into the bottom. Like that. So. There are the two bearings. I'm going to now have some oil on the motor shaft and I just apply all the way to the top. This is just for 
easy assembly. You don't need it for the actual operation of the fan. Okay, so I'm going to let this sit here for a few minutes and I'll be right back. All right, so now we get to put it back together. I'm going to start by putting the rotor onto one of the bearings. It doesn't really matter which one, but I'll do the rear just because that's what I usually do. Basically, you want to slide it back in onto the bearing. This one is a closed end motor, so it might have a bit of a suction, but that wasn't too bad. And what I like to do is take the bearing and gently slide it up and down as you spin the rotor. And this technique allows the bearing to push out some micro debris that might be in the bearing. And this really helps the bearing get a really smooth ride as it spins. So that feels, that feels really smooth. All right, so that's really good. And yeah, so I'll slide this back into the stator. I want to make sure that the oil port is facing the top. Line it up, put the bearing housing back on. And same with the front, same procedure. Make sure the oil port is oriented towards the top. Slide it on. And with this one, do the same thing, but just kind of do this, slide it up and down, spin it around a bit, spin the motor shaft, that's good enough. Clip it back into place, and what you want to do is put the screws back on. Now if these screws are rusty, just take some steel wool and metal polish, polish them up, but these are shiny already, so no need for that. Slide them back on, put the nut back on. And then just tighten up the screws. You want to make sure they are just a bit over snug. So they're tight on, but not over tightened. And make sure they're tightened evenly. All right, that feels good. All right, here's the motor all back together. Now the first thing you might notice when you reassemble it is that the motor shaft might be a bit stiff to turn. And you'll notice this especially with bigger motors, with this one it's not so much the case. But basically that's because the bushing inside here and the rear, they are mounted inside of a pivoting socket. And they are supposed to be self-aligning, but you need to give them a bit of a hand. So take a screwdriver and tap it from different directions on the front shaft. Tap it in from the front at different angles. Give it a spin. Do that a few times. Spin it again. Now it's already much smoother. Spin it around. Now the rear of this motor is enclosed and the shaft doesn't stick out. So there's really no way to tap the shaft itself but basically just take the back end of a screwdriver and tap the bearing housing, and I will do the same thing. Now, let's check out the results. Smooth as butter. Check out that spin down time. All right, so that is pretty much it when it comes to servicing a little C-frame motor. Uh, now these are commonly found in smaller fans, as I mentioned before, so this could be a tutorial for fan collectors or pretty much anybody who's interested in servicing their motor. So hopefully this video was informative and hopefully it helps someone out there. That is just the way I service my little C-frame motors. Seems to work great every time. So that is it for now. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Ooh, that is nice. Should be a fun project.